Hey guys, this is Peter, and if you watch my channel, you know that I have T-Mobile's 5G home internet, and I've been very happy with it. In fact, I've never been satisfied with just the scores that I get right out of the box. I always got to keep tweaking it and making it better and better. This week, I'm going to try out a 4x4 MIMO configuration made out of two 2x2 MIMO antennas. So uh, the radio will support that, and I'm going to get that into that for you. But first, I want to ask you to do me a small favor. There is a young man that lives on my block, and uh, well, this young man lives with autism, and he, his name is Martin, and Martin, he loves sports, he has a job, he, which he's, he loves immensely, uh, he plays golf, uh, what else does he do? He's written a book, and I've just got to say, I've been humbled and encouraged by just his conviction and, and his bravery, uh, and now he wants to be a YouTuber, he wants to be a YouTuber like me. Uh, well, be, not because it's easy, because it's so difficult for him. In fact, he's been working on this video since December, and I was wondering if you just, I'll put a link to it down below. If you wouldn't just blow it up for him, give him a thumbs up and uh, give him some encouragement. You know, if you are if you know somebody that has autism in their life, if you forward this to him, uh, and subscribe, because it'd be great if he just, uh, well, Met, met another dream, met another milestone. You know, this month is Autism Awareness Month. April is Autism Awareness Month. And as Martin told me, autism is not a choice, but acceptance is. So here's to you, Martin. I wish you all the success in the world. Okay, let me get to my antennas and the configurations. Now, I've done a ton of things on a 5G and covered it many different ways. Uh, I did this report and I went with all the goods and the bads. I did miss one and I'm going to cover that. I said that the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band for Wi-Fi wasn't available. And as it turns out, it is. It was hidden and they made it better and I'm going to show you how to find it. But uh, there's a lot of good things in this. If you haven't seen it, take a look. One of the things I mentioned is that this is a gateway. A gateway is a, a junction point between two dissimilar networks. In this case, a cellular network and a home network with Ethernet and Wi-Fi. And uh, well, this is a, uh, it's a good, it's a good modem, but I don't like it as an access point. It does get hot and even the place that I would put a modem would be near the window. And where I'd put the access point is not near the window. It'd be in the middle of the house. So it needed to be separated. So I've done that. I separated mine and I have a whole thing that I've done on this. Oh, I took it apart and took the antennas that were inside and hidden behind the, the silver really painted plastic and brought them outside. And I added a MIMO antenna. And I got to say, that was the biggest advancement we got in speed ever. So I took a professional antenna from Proxycast. It's a, I'll put a link to that. But take a look at this video too. That was a, a great improvement. Today, I'm taking two of these antennas and I'm bringing out the other two sets of pigtails. So I'm basically going to create a 4x4 four four MIMO using two 2x2 two two MIMOs. And uh, well, I've got some, some test results for you. Now, I do want to point out, if you're going to a concert and you have good seats already, moving half again closer only does a little bit. And that's where I'm at. But if you were in the cheap seats and it moved you up considerably, well, that's a big difference. So I was already getting close to a gigabit, which is much as I could muster. So uh, that was with one antenna. So now that I've got the two on there, I was wondering if I could break this thousand barrier. And as someone pointed out, that's the limit of gigabit ethernet. So yeah, everything around me is kind of shutting that down. So yeah, that's kind of the, my maximum. Uh, it would be possible to get wireless devices to go slightly faster, but I'm not quite there. I'm really close and I'm gonna show you that. Um, I do want to point out to you, oh, it, before you hook up an antenna, to know what you're trying to get and figure out what we're getting right now. So here, let me just show you this real quick. This is how I would take a look at your network. If you said, hey, is it going to help me out? I'll go take a look over here. 192.168.12.1, that'll take you to the firmware inside the little tower and bring you here. Now, this shows me that I'm getting two signals, and you'll notice I'm getting four bars, not five. I've never seen five bars, and I believe I deserve them. Here, I'm going to refresh this, make sure it's new, new. Let's take a look. All right, so 
Here's a perfect example. The bars are just a marketing gimmick. What they're trying to do is help you understand all these complicated numbers we're looking at now. The RSRP is your reference signal received power. And what we're looking for is negative 80 decibels or better. Negative 71 is better than 80. So that's a great score. That's above excellent. That would give me the five bar range. Signal to noise, you're looking for above 20. I've got 23. Okay, that would give me five bars as well. And the reference signal received quality, you want something better than 10. Well, negative 8 is better than negative 10. So there again, we should have five bars. So they're a little stingy with the bars, but these are excellent scores. And these did improve when I got the antenna up there. That's one signal. You want to get two signals. What T-Mobile's doing is they're aggregating two signals together. Again, I'm getting excellent scores there and almost super excellent there. Negative 10 would be better. Uh, so negative 11 is slightly worse than negative 10. Negative 9 here would be even better. But these are great scores. This is as good as you can get. But for what? What are we receiving at such good reception? <laughs> well, go take a look at the next box status. It'll tell you what your two signals are. These are called bands. And the different bands have different characteristics and different capabilities. So what you want are good bands. Now, I picked up two of the best. B2, I'll show you what that is, and N41. Now, let's go take a look. Here's the different, uh, different bands that T-Mobile has in their network. 5G and 4G uh, LTE. Now, 5G has some XR bands. It's called N71. But remember, I had N41. N41 is the best one that you can get for home internet. These ones that are 10 times faster, those are millimeter wave. Those are for when you're in a stadium or something, you can see the tower, it's right there. These ones will dissipate after about two blocks. So uh, this is what I like what T-Mobile did is they went for a lot of mid-band frequencies. This N41 was a stroke of genius and aggregating the two was even better. So they aggregated my N41, which is the best one I can reach from a mile away, not two blocks, oh, 1.7 miles. And they married it with band two. I like band two, band four, and band 66. Look at this, band four is 2100, band 66 is pretty much the same. It is the same as band four. Uh, and band two is just slightly under that at 1900. So I'm getting some really nice bands. And uh, in fact, I'm tempted to go see if I tweak it to get band 66. You know, I wish this gateway did have band locking because I do have 66 on that pole and that would give me a little bit more bandwidth. But here we go. I'm gonna uh, test this for you and show you my scores. Let's just give it a quick bump. My ping has been really good. Sub 20s and this one's 21. Look at six, seven, eight. Come on, give me nine. Ooh, I got really close. There we go. We're in the nines. See if we end it that way. Nine sixteen. That's not shabby. Nine sixteen, and you know I'll take my one thirty-seven up. Come on, one thirty-five. Yeah, one thirty-five, one thirty-seven. I've even anywhere between 125 and 140 and that's just rock solid all the time you know with comcast i was paying through the nose uh for 80 88 megabits uh, uh down and for six up now you don't think up matters well it does since the pandemic and we started zooming and w remote working and distance learning and all of that when you have a zoom call and you want it to look good if you want it to sound good well then you really need more than six. 12 would do it. I looks like I could support 10 people. So this is one of the impetus for me changing was, well, the distance wor uh, working and remote learning that we were doing. Or is it remote working and distance learning? Anyway, uh, that was really what caused it. I had three kids working from home and myself working from home. And we just needed better internet. This came to the rescue. This is unlimited. We were hitting a terabyte a month. In fact, Comcast charged me for going over a couple of times. I don't have range or uh, uh, bandwidth anxiety anymore. 
lots of other anxieties, but not that particular one anymore. <laughs> so it's nice, nice to be able to watch a 4K program and take a nap because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, you don't have that anxiety anymore. Anyway, guys, there you go. That's what I'm doing. I would say here's my synopsis. It all depends on the signals you're getting. But if you're getting uh, good signals like I was, you probably don't need a second MIMO antenna. The first one did all the work. So what I would recommend is, just like I had here, I was hitting up to 960 with just one antenna. And I brought out the pins, as I did in the video here, I brought out the pins three and four. They're the easiest to access. And you just run this up the pole. Height is more important than anything, and direction is more important than anything. And this is not even their most expensive antenna. I like this one because it does a beautiful job. So I'll put a link to all that below. I'll put a link to this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching and um, ask me some more questions. Oh, I have plenty of stuff coming up for you. Let's see. I have projectors that were sent to me. I have a home internet, um, sorry, a home solar array set up. So I have three different ways that I want to address getting, uh, getting and storing energy from the sun. And uh, I'll get to that one in the next, uh, in the next video. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.